Hello everyone. Thank you for joining and I welcome you all uh, for joining this webinar on designing apps in MATLAB. Today in this webinar, we are going to build an app from scratch and we will see how easy it is to build an app in MATLAB app designer and also how easy it is to share uh, so that others can use it. To start with this, we'll, I'm using an um, uh, let me open MATLAB. Okay. To start with this uh, designing of app, I've used uh, already a script which is available in the documentation. Okay, I'm building an app uh, which is related to vibration analysis. Okay, let me open that uh, um, program. It is, you can type your order analysis in your MATLAB. And when you click on it, you can see in the documentation you have order analysis for vibration. So I'm building an app for this script. There's already a script like this. I can open this in live script. When I click on this, I can open the live script in my MATLAB. So you can see here, this is a program that we're converting into an app. I already built a pro, uh, an app for this uh, and I am going to show you before I start building my app. And if you see this program, it is about order analysis of, of a vibration signal. It is related to an helicopter. Okay. And this is available with you guys. So you can, if you have MATLAB, you can access it, access this um, document by clicking order analysis in your search. Okay. So I'll, before I start with the app, I will try to show you what I have already built. Okay. So to show i i have uh, i have the app already installed so let me open the app this is the app so it is all this, i made it as a standalone application and I've installed it in my machine so um, meanwhile when the app is opening i can show you this so this is the documentation and we are going to build an app to do all these functions. So this is the app, it is loaded now. In the, in, I have made different tabs. Okay, these are all the different tabs. And in the first tab, we have the introduction. We have order analysis of a vibration signal. So we are going to do all these processes. So I've shown it in a pictorial way. Then we have this load data. So when I click on this button, I can load the data uh, uh, from the machine. Sorry. I can load data, then I can use time graph to plot data, frequency map and waterfall order and all of these things. So this one, we are going to build the first one, two, three, four, these four tabs in our application today. Okay. And this app, again, I'm going to show it in the end. So to start with building the app, we can, we can, there are two ways to open the app designer. First one is to go to the op new. In this, you can go to app and you can click here to open the app designer, or you can type app designer in your command window. App designer in your command window. When you go to the app designer on the left side, you can see the recent apps. Okay. These are all the recent apps which I've used and you have, you can see all the examples, pre-built examples and templates. So if your, if your app resembles anything like this, you can use this template and you can build, or you can learn from this to build your app. And also you have a tutorial for three minutes to three minutes tutorial. You can click on this to start the tutorial and you can learn about it. And for this project, I'm going to use a blank app. Okay. If you see the blank app, uh, app designer, you can see this app designer in this on your left side, you have component library. So on your left side, you have component library, and these are all the components which you can use to build your graphical user interface. And you can see access button checkbox and all of those things. On your right side, you have component browser. So whatever components you drag and drop in, into UI figure, this is called the UI figure. Whatever you drag and drop it into UI figure, 
all of those will be piled in this tree. You can see all of them as forming as a tree in this component browser. To start with the app, before I start with the app, I need data which will be used in, in, the, in after I build the app. So I'll go to the MATLAB. Here I will try to build the data. So in this case, you see, I have to first load data. It's called load heli data. This load heli data is available inside the MATLAB. I will show you where it is available. So it is available in program files. You open MATLAB. Inside MATLAB 2021A, I'm using 2021A. And you can go to toolboxes. And in the toolboxes, go to signals. Go to signals. And in the signals, you can go to signals again. And inside this, you will find heli data. Let me type heli data. Here we have heli data. So this we are, uh, it's already there. So we have first we will load this heli data. Okay, we will load this heli data and we will make it into a table. And this table will be importing into your application. Okay, so let me switch back to MATLAB. To load this heli data, I already wrote a script. We'll open the script. Let me open the script. It is. Um, copy heli data. I've written a live script in this. I'm loading the heli data and I'm creating a table and I'm saving it. Okay, so I run this script. And you can see in the heli data, you have all the components like vibration, uh, T, VIB, RPM, and all of this. And I've created using this components, I've created a table called heli data table. When I open it, you can see time, RPM, and voltage. These are important for me to build the app. So from all this data, I have selected these three components and have built a table. Okay. So I have now heli data table in this here, saved here. Now let's switch back to app. Now we have everything to build the app. So let's switch back to app. Okay. First thing what I want, uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, bring, uh, I want to build different uh, tabs for different plots. So for that, I will use tab here, tab group. I will drop it. You see when you're build, getting a component from the component library, you'll get this uh, uh, lines, guidelines. So it will be easy for you to align things with that. And in the tabs, I, at present, it has two tabs. I want to add more tabs. To add more tabs, I can use this plus button. And I'm clicking this and I made like four tabs. Now I have four tabs. And when I add tabs, you can see automatically that will be in that will be, you know, uh, that will appear in component browser. So to rename these tabs, first thing what I want, I want to do in this is to load data. So load data. So this is the first tab. And with this tab, you're going to load the data. The second one is you're going to plot the plot the graphs. After you plot the graphs, you have you will uh, build an um, frequency map. You'll fill the frequency map and waterfall plot. So you'll have first load data, then you'll plot the graphs. And you'll have frequency map and waterfall plot. For loading the data, uh, I, I, want, I want to load the data into a table. So I'm dragging a table and I'm dropping it here. You can see this table. I can resize it and I can also position it with the help of that guidelines. So whatever you load, that data will be loaded into this table and you can view it. And I want to know what, what file I'm actually loading into this app. 
So to see that I'm using a text field. So whenever I load a file into this, I can see what name of the file in this. Then I want to activate this with the help of a button. Okay, when I click this button, this action should happen. First, rename this table. So in this first one will be time. Second will be uh, RPM. Then you have voltage. Then you have mean voltage. Okay, you have all of this. So first we'll have time, RPM and voltage, and also we'll calculate mean voltage. And here we want to see the file name. So file name, you see, I can, I can change the, I can edit the names by double clicking on it, or I can also, when I click on this, you can see on this right side, you have an inspector. In this, you can change the properties. I can also change it here and I can change the font. I can change, I can change the size. I can give the color and there are a lot more function options available. And for the button here, I will double click and I'll rename it as load. Okay. Now I changed all of this and immediately these are reflected here. You can see this load. When I click on this, it is highlighting here and this is load button. When I'm clicking on this, you can see file name, the same name, what I've written here, file name, edit field. And this is a table. So I will rename it here, the table. I will write it as table. Okay, now we have created a graphical user interface. Okay, for this, and I want to give some functionality to this. The functionality is that when I click this button, it has to open a dialog box. And from that, I should be able to select the file. And that file should be entered into this and it should be displayed. The name of the file should be displayed here. So to give the functionality to the button, I will right click on it and I will create a callback. So let me click on this. Great. Now it changed to code view. So in, in the MATLAB app designer, you have two views. That is a design view where you build a graphical user interface using the comp common uh, uh, components from the component library. And in the code view, you're going to give the functionality to, to it. So in this case, you, if you see uh, the code view, on your left side, you have callbacks, you have functions and properties. And here you have app layout. Okay, when you click on this app layout, you can see the component browser, it gets highlighted. So if you want to know what, what components are there, you can click on this and you can get the names. So when you're coding, this will be useful. And also you can, uh, in this, even in this view, you can change the properties. Okay. And if you see the code view here in this, everything is in gray. So this is all created by MATLAB uh, app designer. It is already created. You have selected some components. So for this components, it has already written the code for you. And this white space is where you're writing or the functionality for the load button. So in this place, you can write your program, whatever is white, you can write your program there and other, other places you can't access or you can't change anything in this. So now let me give the functionality to the button, load button. So first thing what I want to do is I want to open a dialog box. To open a dialog box, I, I will be using a function called UI get file. So when I get when I use this UI get file, it returns an output. It returns an output of file and path. But in my case, I need only file, the name of the file. So I will write it as file. Okay. The, uh, when I open the dialog box, I want to see only mat files. I don't want to see other files. So for that, I'm going to write here dot mat file. So, okay. I, read, I wrote this. Now you can see that there's some highlights. It is highlighting. It is showing that there is highlight. And also when you over to it, you can see what, what it is trying to say. It is saying that uh, terminate statement 
with semicolon to suppress so it will suggest you when you're building an app it will suggest you what what it will give you warnings if you if you can understand you can change it or you can use this option called fix and it will fix the problem for you so in the same way it is trying to say that this you have created a variable but you're not using it anyway so it is unused it is just a warning okay so now we have with this you you you're opening a dialog box and you're selecting a file and that file name is here now you want to load this into the app so for that you are using i am using load function and i'll write here file so the file name will come into this this one i want to assign it to a variable i'm assigning it to the variable as t now i have assigned it here i have to change if you go to the live script you can see here after i load i should remove the dc components so for this i will go here i will change i will i will use the same thing here so t dot heli data heli data table dot um voltage minus mean of the same thing I'll copy this voltage okay. and this I will assign to a new variable that will be mean voltage. I'll change it here to mean voltage. Mean voltage semicolon. So now I load it and I extracted the voltage values. And I created this mean voltage. Now the table is ready. Now it has four variables: time, RPM, voltage, and mean voltage. Now this table, now this heliodata table, I want to assign it to our app table. So to assign it to the app table, I'll use app dot table dot data. You can see when I'm writing, you will get this prompt. So you can the easily. It will it will suggest you what what will come next. So data and um, now I will put as t dot heli data t dot heli data table. Okay. Now this I've loaded. Then this t dot heli data table is assigned to now all the data will be transferred to this app table. Okay. Next, also I want I want to do one more thing that whatever file I'm getting I want to display here. So for that I will write that here in this place. Here I will write that what is this name called? Field file name uh, edit field, right? So I'm gonna write app dot when it's, it suggests me this one name. Then I'll click. Then it says value. Then yes, I want to give value to it. And the value will be file. So the name, whatever is coming, it will be, and uh, it will be assigned to this, and you can see that here in the display. After this app is created, I want some variables to be extracted so that I can use it for the in the uh, other other uh, page tabs. So for that, I am extra. I need three things like time, vibration, and RPM. So I'm going to extract them. So time is t is equal to from the table app table. I'm extracting the table table dot data data dot time. Okay, and copy paste it. Then this will be vibration VIB, and this will be mean voltage. Okay, and this will be RPM. I write it as capital RPM. Okay, and you see again it's saying that these are unused. Okay, okay. Now let's we can test this app now. We have created it, so let's test it till here. To test it, we have to run it. Okay, when you run it, you have to save it first. 
So let me save it on my desktop. Order analysis. I'll save it with this name. It's saved and you can see the app here. You can see the app. So it has load, plot, frequency map. We haven't built these, so these tabs are empty. Now you have this tab. So in this it load, so when I click on the load, you can see here it is showing me mat and all files. So it is by default showing me mat files. So I can see only mat files here. So this is a heli data table. So I'm clicking on this and I'm opening it. You can see this heli data values are all now inside this. And I can also see the name heli data table dot map. Right, so when I use this, I got all this. Now, by, you, by scrolling this, you can see the values. You don't have to actually open the file. You can see it from here, the values. You can understand, okay? Then I want to use these values to plot a graph. I want to plot a graph time with respect to RPM because you can see here T versus RPM and we have T versus vibration. So I'm, I will build, an, uh, now we will build two graphs to plot this. So let's close this and again get back to the app, app designer. Now let's go to design view. Let's make, build this tab. So for, for building the plots, I need two plots. So I will take axis. I will resize it. I'll copy the same thing and paste it. Control C and Control V. Okay, let me make it small to fit all of them here. You can also resize this if you want to, okay? So you can see this here. In, the, in this load data, I have these two functionalities. I want to carry these functionalities in every uh, tab. So I'm copying it and I'm pasting it here. So I have these two here. So this will be plot. This is like plotting the graph, graph. and I have two. So first one, what I wanna do is here, this is, so you, you can see I will be, now I will change the uh, title and everything of the graph directly by double clicking on this. Either you can do it from here or you can click on this and you can change it here. You have, X label, Y label, all of this, you can change from here. So in this case, like I'm double clicking on this and I'm changing the title names and everything from here. Engine, engine speed, engine speed, and this is accelerometer. Vibration voltage. Vibration data. Data. Then to change the access, I'll click here. It'll be engine. It, RPM. And this will be with respect to time. And this time is in seconds. Same way here. This, let me pull it a little down. Okay. So this is double click on this time second and here we have voltage mean voltage that is in millivolts millivolts okay so now we have the, we have extracted uh, time and uh, vibration now we are going to plot them okay so to give fun when I click on this, I want it to plot. So to give again functionality, I will create a callback for this. Go here and I click on this and I'm entering code view again. Now, in, in order to access these variables in this place, I have to create the, I have to create the variables, like I have to define them. So to define them, we have this properties here. Okay, you can read here, you can create a variable to store and share data between callbacks. To share this data between callbacks, you have to create here. To create, you have to click here on this plus button and 
you can see this is created. Okay, from this from this callback, I want to use file. Okay, and I want to use T vibration and RPM in other callbacks. So I'm going to define them here. File. Okay. Property file. Next we have T. Then we have. VIB and uh, RPM. Okay, I've defined this. After you define these properties, okay, they automatically they are highlighted because when you define anything in this, then you have to add app app to it to access it in other callbacks. So I'm going to fix all of this wherever I've written file and T vibration that will change to. App app dot this app yes you can see now I can access all of this in this so same way uh, in the previous step this I want to display the file and I want to plot them so I will use the same name here copy and paste it this line and you can see here the name of this one is now field two okay so i can go here i can put underscore it will suggest me yes two so now it is displaying next you now i have to plot it is simple like plot okay where should i plot this i want to plot in this one first one so to do this first i'll change the names here first we will put it as engine engine speed okay and this one as accelerometer data okay. so here you can see here uh, sorry plot graph if you go here so this is engine speed and this is accelerometer data so, um, so to get this first i want to plot engine speed in this so i will say i want to see you can see here it is asking in which axis you want to plot so it is app dot engine speed okay comma i want to plot time versus rpm same way i want to plot the other one also so instead of engine speed we have this this will be um, your vibration vib the vibration here so we have we have now we have two plots and these plots we have defined them right so this is a functionality for this so in this first one this will uh, display the values here and these two plots will plot in this let's let's build another next tab now frequency map you can see in the frequency map. Let me open the live script so we can see in the live script. So in the frequency map, we want to see this waterfall plot and also we want to see frequency map. So here you can see. The, this function is used. OK. R, uh, RPM frequency map. So I will see what this function is. I'm using help. To know about this function. So when I see the function, okay, it creates two. One graph is this one like this, okay, and the other one is waterfall. So to get this graph, to get a graph, I want to create a graph similar like this, a graph here and a color bar and a table here like this. So for this, you can see here RPM frequency map. If you give inputs as vibration, frequency, and RPM and resolution, it gives you our output as map, frequency, RPM out, and time. This is an image, okay? Image. This is a function which you have to use, and this is you get these time frequency map from this. So let's use the same thing. Copy it, this one, and let's copy this, and go to App Designer, and 
Okay. Be oh, sorry. First, we have to build. We'll we'll make the GUI. Then we will build the code. So for this GUI, I I've shown you that I want to build something similar to this, like this. So I need this one, two, three things. So for the image, I'll use this one. Okay. For the graph, I'll use this one. And same way, I will use these two. Copy them and paste them here. So this one, I will. I don't need the title in this case. So I'm removing the title, and I'll pull it little up. Okay. And this one here, this will be frequency map. This will be frequency map, and here it will be frequency. And units will be hertz. And uh, you have time here. This is in seconds. Same way here, time in seconds. Here we have RPM. This is edit field here. You have a file name, and here we want to say that frequency map. Sorry, okay. Now we built this here. Image is going here. We'll get an image, and here we will get the plot. And this plot, I want to put grids to this. So I can you can see here when I click on this, I'm going to I'm going here and I'm finding this grids here and I'm adding grids X grid and Y grid. So I get the grids in this image. I don't don't need I don't need grids, so I'm not putting the grids there. Now I'm giving I want to give the functionality. Then I'm going to callbacks. I can see here frequency map button. Okay. Now we'll go to the code here, and we will take this. From this here, this one. Let's copy this. Shift to the app. Let me paste it here. Okay. And after this, also I need some more code. So image and this one. So copy it. Control V. This is not required. Now, if we see here, like RPM frequency map, we have to take values from vibration. That is here, it's app dot. So we have to fix this now. App dot vibration, RPM, fix it. And FS, this is a frequency. I will write it here only. Frequency will be 50. And resolution will be 2.5. Uh, this is 500 and this is 2.5. And uh, this is this is the function we are using here. Okay, now I want to put this image in this in this place in this U axis UI axis. So for this, first I will change the name here. Frequency map. Okay. Frequency map, and this will be RPM. RPM table engine RPM. Versus time. So frequency map. So I want this image in frequency map. So I will write here app dot frequency map. So now image will be coming in app dot frequency map and we'll take the values from time, frequency, and map from here. Uh, and this one here, after you get the image, you have you have to change the orientation for that. You are using this uh, Function uh, this command here, and image will be again app dot frequency 
frequency now. Okay. So also you see when I click here, it highlights. When I click here, it highlights. Like so, when you want to trace it, trace the variables, you can easily trace them. So here we have semicolon. Okay, this is highlighted because we haven't used it yet, but we are going to use it for RPM uh, uh, graph. And also, after the image is formed, I want the I want to fit the image exactly in the graph. So for that, I want to give some limits, x limit and y limit, x limit uh, inside the app app dot frequency frequency map comma square brackets so the x-axis is with respect to time so the first value of time here okay then we have the last value dot time end semicolon Copy it and let's paste it for y, x, y also. Axis, use it as y. And this will not, and y axis will be frequency. So here, FREQ. FREQ. Okay. Actually, these, these, even these, I want to use it for the next. Uh, in the other, in the next callback so i want to i want to make these also as variables i want to define these variables control z copy them and i go here map I defend these variables so now this plot this this graph is over now let's concentrate on this plot okay for this I have to plot engine values so I can like just copy from there and put it here it is plot dot uh, plot r uh, here it is rpm because here the name is rpm we are using so rpm rpm and we need time here it is like app dot time we are taking this time here app dot time and you have rpm out so we are taking this value here, here RPM out capital O it out. So this one should be changed to app dot RPM. So it's all done. Now for this also I want to give the access. So I will copy the same thing from here. I have to give LX limit. So I will give here RPM here. RPM from this. Okay, now also in this, I want to add a color bar. So let me add a color bar in after the map. Okay, for the color bar, I will use color. Color bar, I want this color bar inside the app frequency. App dot frequency map. Okay, and let me assign a variable to this. C as a variable and c dot i want to label it when it is created so c dot label okay dot string is equal to um let's say what it should be r rpm amplitude rpm amplitude okay and semicolon now this is ready now we have image we have color bar which comes to it and your plot now next next uh, functionality is waterfall okay let's this waterfall plot so waterfall plot will like, be exactly same like this so need i want to copy this i'll copy the whole thing 
means I'll copy it. I'll paste it in waterfall. Okay. Here I want graph in this case. So I want grid, sorry. So I selected this and I'm going to this grids and I'm giving these three grids. Later I can see these grids. So for the waterfall plot, we will use the data from the same thing, but here it is in the form of image. Here it will be in the form of 3D graph. So I'll give here, I'll put waterfall. Waterfall plot. Let's give write a callback for this. Okay. In this callback, um, we will be using the same, the same thing. Okay. Uh, the data from uh, RPM frequency map. And let me copy this. I'll paste it here. Now, instead of um, uh, image, I want it as surf. So I will change it to surf. Surf, that's it. And I want to, this in this case, this what uh, the plot here is, the name is frequency map to, right? So here this should be frequency underscore map. Change this. So we're using the same data. That's why we made this as app here, app dot map. The reason because we are again using in the different callback. So with this, you get the surf and you can copy the same color bar. Even in this, you need a color bar. So you can the color bar here, but here it will be frequency underscore two. Okay. And the same way you have the same plot on the base. So we can copy this. Paste it. This should be RPM underscore two. You can see here when I click on this, the change to RPM underscore two. RPM underscore two. Same thing here. So okay, now we have built the complete plot. But we are accessing the data. Okay, we are extracting the values t from the table. Then we are plotting uh, these two things: uh, time versus RPM, time versus vibration. Then we are also check. Yes, we are um, creating a, a RPM frequency map, and we are using image to display it, and a color bar also, and also a plot. And to show 3D graph, which is a waterfall plot, we are using surf uh, function. So now let's run this and see how the app is. So the app is here. You can make it big. One second. I should go here and see. Okay, let me run this again. Let me go to the code view and here, app layout. Let's run this one more time and see how it is displaying. Okay, this is already saved. So let me close it and open it once again. Close this app designer and here we have order analysis. Okay. Let me click on this. It's open now. Let's run it. There's something wrong. Let me drag and see if I can see the options. No. UI figure. Yeah, that is because this has gone bigger than the UI figure. Sorry, guys. When I dragged it, I think this went more than the UI figure. Yes. This, yeah. So I have to fix it and fit this inside the UI figure. Now let me run this. I think now it will come properly. Yes. So we have the app now. So we have different uh, tabs, all are filled now. Let's uh, test this now. First, load the data. So map, 
So it, uh, open it. Sorry. Uh, you can see the data here. Like it is all it, it all the data is here now. Next you have plot. I'll run the plot and I want you to compare with this. That's why I brought it here. Let, let me run this also along with this live script. You can see uh, I've built exactly the same thing, but you don't need to use a script. Now, this is a plots. Then we have frequency map. When I click on this, I get the color graph and you can see this. And your waterfall plot. And, and this one has the same functionalities like your app, uh, MATLAB, so you can rotate this. You can see it. Okay, and you can go onto this and you can click to see the values. And also you can, you can, when you go to this, you also have an option to save it in the form of pictures, images, and all those things. And you have all of them, you can act, you can analyze the data. So instead of sharing, um, sharing the complete script, you can make an app and you can share it with your uh, colleagues. And to share it, I will show you how to share it. Now we've created the app. To share it, you have to go here. You have to click on this. You have three options, MATLAB app, web app, and standalone desktop. So the thing is, if you have a, if you create it in a standalone desktop like this, when you click on this, you get this. You can fill all of this author name and you want to so put one splash screen when you want. And this, and you can package it. When you package it, all the files will be created. I will show you and created and this file you can share it now let me go to my desktop you it will create file all these files like this and this you can share it with your colleagues and they should have a matlab compiler not the matlab so you have, they should have matlab they should, to compile to compile this app you you need a matlab compiler to run it, you run it, you need a MATLAB compiler. So these are the files. You can see this app, you can install them and you can use it. And um, also you have a web, a web app. Okay, I will show you a video about this web app. And the standalone app I've already installed in my computer, which I was telling you, this is order analysis. Here it is. I'm clicking on this. You see, this is a splash screen. Okay, and the app will load. I will show you the functionalities of the app. We have built a part of it. I'll show you the full functionalities. After that, we'll see the uh, web app. Okay, you can see this app here and in the you have a lot of tabs here. Okay, this is the introduction I've given like this to show what exactly we are gonna do inside the app. So here the same way you have load. So when I click on this load data, uh, I can go to my desktop, I have heli data. I will open it in this in this app. Sorry, in this app, uh, in, in this app which I have designed, it will detect if it is Excel file or MAT file, and accordingly it will open. It will also work with uh, Excel files in this case. And you have after you load it, you have time graph here. You can plot. You can see you can plot it, and your frequency map here you can see with what file you're working here you can change the resolution here let me change the resolution and show you you can change the resolution and you can see and i put this help here so you can explain what this app this page does so i put a help here so that they can read it from here and i put a logo and you can see as i'm progressing the apps these are these are these are first deactivated they will get activated as I progress. So when I go to the waterfall, when I click on it, the waterfall is created here. Um, same way I've shown you this functionalities, order map. When I click on this order map, these all will be opening because these next tabs will be taking data from the order map. So, so, so people sort of, some of them don't, don't go to this and press this. You can also hide this and make this way. So order map you have, then you have average order spectrum and you can see the peaks and you can select them and order tracking and so on. 
Okay, this is the app that I have, like for the whole script, I built this app, complete script. Okay, then I will show you the live script. Live script. Not sorry, not live script. I mean to say video. Now see that we are in the browser, we are in Chrome browser. Okay, and we are inside this MATLAB, MATLAB uh, web app server. To access it, you have to use, you can use this address. And already we have put um, a file in it. Like well, we have put the app inside the um, browser. When you click on it, the app opens. And now you have, you have, you have, the app is open inside the browser. You can see it looks exactly like the app, standalone app or the app which you built. Okay. and you can it you will see that it has all the same functionalities like when you load it it will ask you to for the, displaying a dialog box you can select a file and you can select a, um, a, a file and that file will be loaded into this okay then you have a time graph you can plot it same way then you have frequency map all the functionalities will work in again the app the same way then you have waterfalls and you can see you can rotate it. So this has all the functionalities as as you all the properties will be same like MATLAB because it is running an engine that is MATLAB runtime component under the hood. And you, if you select the graph, you can see the values. Then you see the order map. Same way or, or average order spectrum. So when you select those peaks, you can see the values. Order tracking. The reason why we, we have we, the good thing about this web app is that you can create all your apps and put it in one place. You can see now I put in this, you can put many apps in this one server and all the people who are connected to the local network can access these files using their web browser. So this is, this is a advantage. So you can, you saw how you can build an app uh, using uh, uh, like uh, from the MATLAB live script, I use some commands and I build the app exactly like it. And instead of sharing your live script, uh, you can, share the app with your colleagues in the form of standalone or a web app and they can use it. Like people who don't know MATLAB also can use it. And with the help of MATLAB app designer, you can build those professional apps easily. And this is, this is a demonstration. Um, so if you have any questions, you can post it in the chat and we are here to answer. When you share your app, no one can see the code. They will see it as an app and uh, they don't see what is inside it, the code for it. So they can use it as an app itself. See, the normal script is where you have all the functions. So when you share this live script or any normal script, the function you have to run it in MATLAB and one by one. But if someone who doesn't know MATLAB and you can to share it with them and you want to see, you want them to see only the results, in that case, you can use an app. So if you give them an app, they can, they don't have to see the code or anything. They can use it directly. 